everybody. Uh, just give, allow me a second to put up my slide. My name is Maximilian, and I'm working for ISPA, Internet Service Providers Austria. Um, and quick question, who of you has ever heard before of ISPA? Ah, that's less than half. I'm terribly sorry for you, so we have to go all through my slides explaining what we do. Um, maybe just to connect what uh, my colleague has just said previously. Um, there are a lot of things changing, and you know, there are lots of stuff we don't know how to handle uh, in the best way. And this hybrid, nothing new. This is our association got established some 20 years ago. And from the very beginning, it was clear that the, the internet uh, is constantly changing, constantly evolving, and that not always also uh, the good guys are, one, are the ones being in the lead. So the internet requires a strong dialogue between industry and authorities to discuss how things should uh, develop forward. And that's one of the reasons we are there. Uh, by the way, we are also a Verein, uh, we're also an NGO. We got, if you wish to say, uh, we got founded by the elders of the internet in Austria because they already back then once again realized that the internet has got great potential but a lot of things can go wrong and they do go wrong, something we have to be very clear about. And so from the very beginning they tried that there's someone around who administers the talk between the, the stakeholders. For example, what we also did back more than 20 years ago, we have established Stopline, that's an hot, online hotline where you can report anonymously uh, child sexual abuse material, but also uh, Nazi offenses you might come across on the internet uh, while surfing. Um, it's anonymous. Uh, any idea why? Why you can you know, go there without having to tell your name? Because mostly, most probably you won't you won't be keen to tell the police officer why you stumbled across a certain image of a, of a minor. So we know the shortfalls of the public system. We are really trying to be in between them to make sure reports are still being forward to the, to the police. And that's what we're doing. We are in, in contact with a, lot of, with a hell of organizations with logo you see behind me, but I'm not going to speak about it in detail. Um, just keep in mind, yes, we are we are an industry association, yes we have got civil society roots, but this doesn't stop us, it doesn't stop us from engaging with the public sector and also working together with, with law enforcement, which is a very big topic right now. Because when I joined this but ten years ago there was a big tension between telecom operators, you know, these guys you uh, use for you know calling each other or accessing the internet and the police. So ten years ago they still really haven't found a way to communicate with each other. What if you know they had an IP address and they wanted to know who is behind this IP address will boost as a subscriber. Um, the legal requirements were relatively unclear and there were a lot of tension between the players. Now, 10 years later, this system seems to work quite well, but now we've got a new player on the market. They're called platforms. The problem is they're not sitting in Austria and they're not speaking our languages in many cases. And you've just, you've just mentioned Facebook and whenever I hear someone mentioning Facebook, I feel like they're um, say, uh, we're speaking about things which are mainly going to be a big concern to the elderly population uh, uh, or, or, or the elderly section of the people using the internet. Um, looking ahead, I see things like TikTok, uh, formerly known as Musical.ly, a hell lot of uh, messengers. And these things are, are rapidly growing and sometimes even we as industry association are surprised how fast they are growing and the big well-known players are not doing as good as everyone might expect especially, for example, when speaking with Facebook. I'm not saying they're not doing well, but it's true. They're being more used to elderly people now. What we're doing, uh, well, we've also made a book, uh, because we found out that more than 50% of the uh, children between the age of 3 to 5 are already using the internet, 52%. Uh, if you have children, you will know that the best way to make them silence down for a second is to just pass down your phone for a second. I guess no one of us ever has done it, you know. But it happens quite a lot. So we came up with a book and we translated it with the help of UNODC, that the United Nations Office Against Drugs and Organized Crime, into 11 languages. Uh, reason being, um, there's not so much out there when it comes to awareness materials. So, I think we're relatively, we're relatively positive about the youngest users because everyone knows that they really need to learn, you know, they're young, you know, you have to teach them how to use the internet. Do you know what the worst kind of uh, segment is from our point of view in respect to online security? 
Any ideas? Rich elderly people. People like you know, as small as. Because we've got the money to buy fancy toys. And in the best case, we can actually order someone to override security settings for us. Because we think we know ourselves. So for example, a 60-year-old politician, I would say, is far more dangerous than 20 youngsters. They have got lots of time and they have lots of energy, etc. etc. But this guy, if he fails to have a, a pin code on his phone, or if he has, let's say, five employees and all of him or assistants are using the same his Twitter profile to access Twitter. There's a lot of damage that can get out, that can uh, stem out of this. So once again, we're relatively positive about youngsters because they know they have to learn. Big challenges are the people which are not that young anymore, including myself. So why am I so persistent about it? Because as East Austria, we organized a workshop uh, beginning of this year, and the reason we organized it because uh, we were approached by our members Google and Facebook who said, well, you know, we should really do something about Austria. Uh, you know, approaching politicians, telling them how to make sure that, you know, that the whole uh, European vote is going to be handled in a safe manner. And we sent out around 500 invitations. Any guesses how many people attended our workshop? 50. No, 50. <laughs> but we were still super frustrated because we knew that there was lots of room for improvement security-wise from our members. Once again, 10 people using the same password of uh, MEP. Brilliant idea. Yeah. However, the turn up was, I would say, within so, yeah, 50 people. Uh, we had all the relevant ministries there, um, and some selected parts of academia. But still, what kind of surprised me personally back then was how unclear, for example, the responsibilities in Austria seemed to be. And I would have also expected a, a little bit more interest um, from parliamentarians uh, themselves, but that's where we are. So the people we are trying to talk to are not overly interested in trying to make uh, sure that uh, online votes are not going to be manipulative. Once again, I gave you the example of many people using the same login and credential. Uh, if you have a hacker who, or you know, whatever, you got good knowledge about this fact and they know the credentials, they will use it probably one or two days before the election. They will post something stupid, they will post something irritating, and it will take ages for the politicians, literally speaking, to come back and try to rectify it. However, if you already have different accounts set up first, have two, uh, two factor authentication in place, it's a completely unavoidable, uh, it's a completely avoidable risk. Um, but to be fair, um, it's not enough, you know, blaming uh, the other side. Um, as industry association, we are, are used to taking the blame for things not working out. You know, uh, in reality, they, they do. Um, in respect to Facebook, um, I think the overlying messages they have improved quite a lot from where they've been a couple of years ago. Um, <coughs> I guess you're all uh, um, familiar with the ad library, where you kind of uh, where you can easily browse to and see the ads that have been featured. And there's also a report kind of um, uh, providing statistical data. And I think the next speaker will also speak about the ability of having an API, so you can directly plug into the data to use it for your uh, for your research. Um, we just played around a couple of days before coming here, and then, for example, in, uh, since March, there have been 42,000 political ads in Austria, and about 3 million have been, uh, have been spent. So, my question is to you, who do you think has spent the most money on advertising on Facebook since, what is it, uh, since March 2019? FPO. Yes. Yes. Keep it flowing, keep it flowing. Who else? <laughs> yeah, getting warmer, but not, not, no, 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 no. Yes. Green is a good direction. Yes. Does it get yes, does it get greener as the, than the greens? Green peas. Yes. Greenpeace had 2,500 uh, ads out there. Um, followed by uh, uh, the Austrian uh, Federal Chamber, uh, Chamber of Commerce, this summer, but they just had uh, 1,900 something like that. So there's a big gap. Someone at Greenpeace really knows the job and they're super active. 
So this is what it looks like, the Facebook library. And I can just invite you to go there and play around. You will find lots of interesting facts. It was, it was super difficult to agree on one screenshot. And I think we always take one where all the political parties are on. Yes, that's the reason we took it. But there might be more, more interesting ones out there. Just have fun, play around and enjoy. And of course, uh, another member we have got, uh, Google. They also have got a transparency report and they also have got a repository where you can go and uh, dig into the, the archive and to see what's going on. Uh, it's almost a bit more tempting to go to the Google archive because they also have little screenshots of the ads. So it's quite interesting to, to browse around. And I think it will be, for sure be mentioned today, uh, the self-regulation guidelines for the European Commission. The, Re the European Commission see quite happy with the outcome, I would like to say. Um, from our perspective, I wouldn't go as far as saying that nothing happened because I think if something happened, if there was any kind of manipulation, it will take some time for us to find out if it happened. So, as with many things in this respect, we are, we are always calling for lawmakers or the public sector to make sure there's reliable statistical data because in many cases just having a, how to say, uh, unsure feeling in your guts doesn't really is a good uh, basis for, for regulation. This is not to avoid regulation. I want to be very clear on this. But first, of all, there needs to be empirical data, <coughs> and then on this data we can then build upon. This, for example, was a big difference between Austria and the European Union. Have tackled uh, hate speech. In Austria, it was mostly you know emotions, and I feel that there's too much out there. The EU Commission had a monitoring in place, really measuring how long it takes before an ad is taken down. And if you also con uh, confront industry with uh, proper numbers, and you know they're not negotiable numbers because they come out of a good predefined set, you will also be much faster uh, reaching a conclusion with, um, with cooperation. So the next, uh, yeah, we have got Google, and we also got a screenshot there, the transparency, re um, the transparency report. Here again, I think we just took a very, yes, it will. Uh, you've got the four most recent one, um, and here the f uh, three out of the four most clicked ads were actually from the, the Greens, so they were doing actually quite well. Um, today uh, we were checking if you know we should add a new screenshot, and we were completely surprised uh, to see that all the most recent screenshots we saw there were in Polish. Any idea why? Polish elections. Polish elections. Uh, one and a half weeks ago, and it seems some ads are still running. So you see that, how to say, that um, Polish nationals living in Austria are still being targeted. So it's a, it's a cross border phenomenon, and yeah, super interesting to watch. So I was told to be super brief. Uh, I really tried to be. Um, at the end, maybe just one sentence. Google and Facebook are two of our members. We have got 220 members. It all started uh, you know, over 20 years ago when the others of the internet founded us. But we've got to I'm say we are trying to represent the whole internet ecosystem, and these are just two big names. And um, it's always fascinating to see how much is moving, and we always need to continue learning and need to continue trying to find a way which is best for industry, but of course also the public sector.